Chronicles of Paul presents. So you guys are what? Spiritualist exorcists? Yeah, something like that. Great changes are coming to the world. You'll see it with your own eyes. What the f? From the creator of Bubba Hotel. John! 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 John dies at the end. A video review. John dies at the end. Oh, hi there. It's Paul coming at you from the Critics Couch. That's just a fun name I gave to my couch for when I'm reviewing movies. Today I'm going to review a movie adaption of the classic horror novel John Dies at the End, written by the brilliant David Wong, which is actually just an alias for the lead writer at Crack.com, which is a very funny website. You may ask what I'm drinking here, that's actually some soy sauce, which in the novel, of course, is the name of a drug that our lead characters Dave and John take at a party, which opens up their perceptionary gates to other worlds and other dimensions. Now, they're fighting off all kinds of grotesque monsters while trying to save the world because a series of events just starts to happen after they take the drug. And it's just a wild, wacky ride that I think is destined for B-movie cult status for sure. Tonally, the story feels like a combination of like Philip H. Dick, H.P. Lovecraft, David Cronenberg, with this kind of really unique sense of like stoner humor thrown in. If this sounds appealing to you, run out, get the book immediately, because it's one of the best reads that I've ever enjoyed. And uh, I think if you're a fan of the horror genre, you're gonna love it. When I was reading it, I was wondering how this could possibly translate to a movie. Well, you know, I'm happy to say that the movie kicked all kinds of ass. I loved it. Don Coscarelli is the director. He also did the cult classics of Ahotep and Phantasm. So he brought this whole wacky B-movie sensibility to it. There's all kinds of great practical effects, you know, some wacky creature designs, and just stuff you never see in movies anymore. And it was just, it was really, really refreshing to see. Now, while large sections of the book are overlooked, it kind of made sense due to budgetary restrictions and time constraints because you can't really have everything in the novel packed in there. But they did, they did a pretty good job. They, they trimmed out some of the important stuff, but for the most part it still felt like the novel, which was exactly what I wanted. Now the performance by the two leads was fantastic and Paul Giamatti plays a good supporting role here who's always, always great. And I can't wait to watch the movie with my friends and just share it with everyone for years to come because I liked it that much. You never see fun, outlandish original genre pictures these days. And this is one of the best in my opinion. It's wacky, full of twists, turns, nasty creatures, stuff from other dimensions, and it's got some really bold, bold ideas. So I, I couldn't recommend it enough. And I also have to say that you should be paying for it. You should be renting it on iTunes, video on demand, or even going to see it at theaters when it's on its theatrical run. And if you, you enjoyed the movie, I, I totally recommend that you go pick up the book because the book is even better and it's phenomenal. And I also have to say the sequel, this book uh, is full of spiders, could possibly be even better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it to the novel now, the movie versus novel. So I'm going to head over to the spoiler seat. So I'm just going to give you a few seconds to close the video so you don't ruin anything for yourself if you haven't read the book yet, or even for that matter if you haven't seen the movie. So. I'm going to head over there now. Here's a few seconds. Book versus movie. A video comparison. Hey guys, it's me, Paul. I'm in the spoiler seat to give you a little movie versus book comparison. Now, I bet the skeptical people out there are wondering, you know, they must have cut out a lot. I want to know what it is so I can, you know, know whether I want to waste my time or not. Well, you know, even though it feels like the novel, I do have to admit there's a lot of things they cut out. Uh, if the Vegas sequence is one of your favorite parts of the novel, you're going to be sorely disappointed because it's not there. They go directly from the back of Shipwreck's van to the mall, basically cutting out the entire middle section of the novel. Which, you know, it's disappointing, but it, it's understandable given the circumstances. Uh, another thing that might irk some, some diehard fans is the change of the, Molly's name. Molly isn't actually Molly anymore, it's Bart Glee. And apparently they, they named it Barkley because that was the actual dog's name that they were using for the movie. And uh, they were either too lazy or they didn't want to spend the money to, to make it sound like Molly. So 
that's just kind of an oversight, which is unnecessary, I would say. Uh, and a third thing that a lot of people are going to be bothered by is the romance between Amy and Dave is almost non-existent. Uh, Amy is in the, in the movie, but she plays more of a Jennifer Lopez role. You don't actually get any development between her and Dave. You don't get any of the backstory between them or the history. It's just a girl that he met in a party and, uh, you know, she, she serves her purpose for the, uh, the, the ghost store and that's, that's pretty much it. They do, they do fall for each other at the end. Um, and the biggest omission I would say is the lack of Monster Dave. They, they never really imply that Dave isn't in fact Dave, but he's a, he's a clone sent from another dimension. That part of the story is completely, completely absent, which is a fan favorite and an actual personal favorite of mine. Um, I'm not sure whether they can adapt the second book, given all these changes. It might be a little bit of a struggle, but they made the same kind of cuts that they did with the, the, first, the first movie, then, you know, it is very possible. But I think it is worth mentioning that Bark Lee does die at the end, so Molly dies in essence, and she was an important part of the second book. So whether or not they could bring her back or even do a second movie is up in the air. Personally, I would really like to see the same team handle another another movie because it was it was pretty enjoyable for what it was, and I, I really liked it. So while it doesn't hold up to the book, because few movie adaptions do, uh, it's still great on its own. So I hope you watch it and make up your own mind. That's uh, John dies at the end. Enjoy.